<clears throat> so, Vermentino from Gregorio uh, Il Civitaio. So we've done a few of his wines now. He features heavily in our social media. I go and see him a lot, we hang out a lot, we go for dinner a lot. He's a really, 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 really lovely guy. The wines are amazing. They're really clean. There's all natural filtration. There's no... Um, there's no messing around with him, like he makes wines that are lovely and, and drinkable and this is an outstanding example of that. 100% Vermentino, stainless steel fermentation, straight into the bottle. We're in Maremma in Tuscany, right? So as you remember going back through the vlogs, it's coastal. So we get sea air, the sea air picks up, uh, the Vermentino picks up that, that saltiness quite easily and the soil as well, it's really minerally. So the wine is, is clean, it's zesty, it's got a bit of minerality, so on a hot summer's day, it's a nice summer's day, it's like 20 degrees here in the UK. This is perfect. In the garden, get it open, pair a tea well wine, have a glass, share it with friends. It's a really, really good wine. All of his wines are wonderful. We're showing three of them at London Wine Fair next week. That's how much I rate this guy's wine. Legend. Muralia. <clears throat> so Muralia, you'll see over the next couple of months, we've had the Viognier. All the Viognier's coming. We've had the Viognier, we've got the Viognier, we've got this blend. Uh, I've got a straight Sangiovese from him. There's some other wines that I'll look to take on in the future. He's got some Syrah and some Syrah blends, which are really, really nice, but slowly, slowly. Uh, this is Cabernet Merlot Sangiovese. Sangiovese is the predominant grape in this. This is his entry-level wine. Now, when I did a tasting with him, I tried the Rosé. It's really lovely. It's, we've got it at the London Wine Fair again, another one of his like white chocolate on the nose. Strawberry, really lovely. I say lovely a lot, don't I? It's really um, fresh, really zingy, really kind of uh, uh, Moorish as far as rosé is going. I'm not a big rosé fan, but his is wonderful. It's a 65,000 bottle producer, so he's quite big. Gregorio makes 30,000 bottles a year. This is 65, so you know a lot more wine in production, so he has a lot more wines to his, his portfolio. Um, I'm a big fan of his, and this as well, like an entry-level wine, this will blow your mind. Like The flavours that come out of this are out of this world. But it finishes really quickly, so <clears throat> if you want a big wine that rolls and rolls and rolls, um, then go somewhere else. For this, this is almost like he, he, he sells it as like an aperitivo wine. He actually said the best thing um, winemakers have said since I've been in Tuscany. I'll move that because last time I was filming this, it was right in front of my face. Um, but he said one of the best things that winemakers have ever said to me in Tuscany. He says, we only sell the wine we can't drink. So they make a lot of wine and they sell the stuff they can't drink. So that's his way of kind of telling us that his wine is for him. That's what he makes it for, it's for him, and he loves it so much. So yeah, a lovely entry-level red wine. Um, quite herbaceous, r really kind of packed with like these these kind of um, fresh red fruits, and then also it just stops. And you're like, oh, I'll have another one to see what's going on. And that's where this wine is just, stainless steel fermentation, no oak at all, really, really great wine. Um, Okay, so another new producer. Actually, everyone's new Pop and Gregorio this week, month, week, month, month. Um, Tufo Rosso. So, I met Sassatondo at uh, the show in Piacenza last year. Tried his Chile Giallo. It's amazing, and it broke my heart when I went to see him because they have it in the Wine Society. So, we won't bring it into the UK. One of the big things about Jackson said is all our wines are exclusive and our wines are, are coming through us into the UK to you guys. So the fact that Chili Jolly is with the Wine Society, I felt that it would be a bit rude to do that to you. Um, the rest of his wines are amazing and I'm going to take them all. So, eh. Tuforoso. So, they are near a place called Pitigliano, which if you've ever been to Tuscany and been to Pitigliano, it's this beautiful city kind of carved into the side of a hill. It's, it's, it's on Tufos, the soil, or the rock, sorry, volcanic rock. And that kind of goes up the side of the hill and then they built into that, and they built Pitigliano. It's the, they used to call it, or they call it Mini Jerusalem in Italy because it has this massive Jewish uh, quarter. It's a beautiful, beautiful town, city, town, town, beautiful town. Definitely worth a see if you ever come to Tuscany, Southern Tuscany, Pitigliano, stunning. These guys are really close to there. This is their entry level red wine. Now this blew my socks off. He said to me, do you want to try the, uh, the house wine we sell to local restaurants? I was like, yeah, right. Wow. So. Sangiovese, obviously the predominant grape. Um, there's a percentage of Chiliagiolo in there, there's Toroldigo in there, and there's Merlot in there as well. And it is, oh, it's wonderful. It's really, really wonderful. It's massive though. It's like a really huge wine. This is a real food wine. You're gonna wanna sit down for dinner with this. Um, something really hearty, like you could go like a real sort of 
a stew this time of year probably not ideal so maybe just like red meat if you're gonna do a barbie boom this would be perfect on a barbecue this has got your dark cherries and your black currants amazing it's literally like jam this stuff wonderful um pretty big production 45,000 bottles a year not of this but of their <clears throat> entire range we've also got the vino bianco in the uk which is wonderful and um there's one that i just call blue which is like this but darker blue the label is um, uh, uh, umbra blue umbra blue oh it's amazing so definitely want to keep an eye out uh, for that one coming in the next couple of months. But these are a lovely couple. They make wonderful wine. I'm really pleased we're working with them and we've got a couple of their wines at London Wine Fair as well. So we're in good hands. Oh, it's lovely. Uh, and last but by no means least, the Syrah. Um, Caterina that makes this. I went to see Caterina. Uh, we met her again at Piacenza. And this is what I did. I met a lot of producers at the Piacenza Wine Fair. And then after that, I followed up with a meeting and a tour and I know it's organic, I know it's small production, I know they're lovely people and that's why I want to work with them. So it's not I'm going to a wine tour and go, that's great, you lot can have it. I'm trying the wines and then going to meet them. She is wonderful, um, stunning woman, like she's just beautiful and she's really, really kind of like, really focused on the farm and, and, and the soil and things that are grown there and like the whole estate, they hunt, wild boar and menace. Um, and they're almost becoming a pest in Tuscany now because there's so many of them. Uh, they come in and eat all the grapes and I know it's kind of like, well, they were there first. Yeah, I agree. But there needs to be a level of control. So they've reintroduced wolves into Tuscany. I don't know if you know this, if you're living rural. Um, because basically I watched a documentary on Yellowstone Park. And the same with Yellowstone. So Yellowstone kind of took on a life of its own and it grew and grew and grew. And then they realised there was no natural predator within Yellowstone. So they re reintroduced wolves. Which people were a bit like, oh, should you be doing that? And what's happened is it's, it's kind of brought the, the ecosystem back into balance, which is what I'm going to try and do in Tuscany is kind of balance things out again by getting the walls back. Um, anyway, what was I waffling on about? So she has a really wonderful farm, it's near Pisa. And it's basically, she described it as a pie split into four, into quarters. And each of the four vineyards are four completely different soils. And she's really, really passionate about what she does. And she kind of showed me I taught, taught the, 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 the word landslide because they had like landslides. A lot of the ground is, um, it's like clay and then sand. Um, and then what happens is the sand kind of shifts obviously and then the, the ground subsides and they've had a few bits of subsidence here and there. And she was showing me there's one section where you can actually see the different types of soil completely cut out of the ground. It's wonderful. Um, this is 100% syrup. So Carlo and I tried this in Piacenza and we loved it. It's, it's not a stereotypical like big, Tuscan Syrah though, she spent a lot of time in New Zealand and it's more of a New Zealand style Syrah, so more of a white pepper than a big black pepper. Spice, it's soft, the tannins are quite soft so it's quite an easy drink. Um, food wise, again, your red meats, like a steak or, or lamb would be, mm, maybe not lamb. Be a bit overpowering for lamb. Well this is a bit softer actually, and like New Zealand, New Zealand Syrah kind of goes with lamb, so I would, I would probably maybe do this with a piece of lamb. Um, or kind of like lamb chops, marinated lamb chops, rosemary and lemon marinated lamb chops, you know, that kind of thing, and then maybe do them on the barbie. Nice weather this time of year would go really well. Um, there's another one of hers I've got as well. It's called a Punto, which is her Sangiovese Merlot blend. They basically tried and tried, and she kept bringing in samples to her dad and giving to him, and he was like, oh, another sample, how much fun. And then she kind of got to one and she went, Apunto, point. That's it. This is the last one. Tried it, loved it. I tried it, loved it. It's coming to you guys soon. And that's it. Uh, this is May, right? May wines, incredible. Um, big stonker of a wine on a hot day, probably not your best cup of tea. But this, 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 and even this, these are really quite lovely. So your mixed case is those. Uh, your red case of those. And then if you've subscribed, all our subscribers get four bottles this month. So if you subscribe this month, you get four bottles. If you subscribe recently, you get four for the first three months, so you get all four bottles. So if you know anyone that's interested in wine, organic wine, especially Tuscan wine and our business, uh, point them our way. We've got some little flyers in the box this month. So if, if you order eight, one box, three box, six boxes, you get 5% off. The subscribers, it's just going to carry on the way it is with subscriptions. Uh, we're going to roll on with a four for three for the next couple of months and then that will stop. And then we'll look at something else to, to, to kind of get subscribers on board. But yeah, I will see you next month with a different background. Ciao.